Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church in Eugene. My name is Molly Mae Culligan, and my pronouns are she, her, and I am this morning's worship associate. If today is your first time with us, we'd love to get to know you. Right after service, you're invited to our welcoming room, which is located in the south entrance, so right through those doors. And if you're online, the link to our visitor forum is being dropped into the chat now. As you enter the sanctuary and at any point during the service, you may write your joys and sorrows in our book, light a candle, or place a stone in the water, which is right over there. Those joining from home can write prayers of joy and sorrow into the chat. And during the week, anyone can go to the pastoral care portal on our website to let our ministers know if you need some support. We gather in worship to find meaning and to live more deeply. Worship creates connections within, among, and beyond us, calling us to our better selves, calling us to live within wisdom and compassion. Whoever you are, whomever you love, whatever your image of the holy, we are glad you're here. The flaming chalice is a symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith. The cup represents the re religious community bound not by creed, but a covenant to affirm and promote our principles. And the flame represents the eternal love, hope, and truth. Let us light the chalice this morning with the words of poet Alice Walker. We have a beautiful mother. Her hills are buffaloes. Her buffaloes, hills, we have a beautiful mother. Her oceans are wombs, her wombs, oceans. We have a beautiful mother. Her green lap, immense. Her brown embrace, eternal. Her blue body, everything we know. And now, let's say together the words of our mission, which affirm our shared purpose. Empowered by love, we transform ourselves and serve our world. During the, during the Zoom teaching times. Good Sunday morning, everyone. I'm the Reverend Jen Young Sun Ru, and I use the pronoun she and her. And I am this congregation's settled minister. Daniel, we're so happy to have you. Thank you for that beautiful prelude. It's really fun to um, have you, and it gives us a chance to um, let Suzanne have a very well-deserved day of rest. <laughs> Today is Mother's Day, a day of celebration and appreciation, and for some, a day of sorrow. May it be a day for all of us, we who are rejoicing and we who are weeping. Everything is so beautiful and I am so sad. Those are the words of the spiritual poet Mark Nepo. He continues, this is how the heart makes a duet of wonder and grief. A light spraying through the lace of the fern is as delicate as the fibers of memory forming their web around the knot in my throat. The breeze makes the birds move from branch to branch as this ache makes me look for those I've lost in the next room, in the next song, in the laugh of the next stranger. In the very center, under it all, what we have that no one can take away and all we've lost face each other. It is there that I am adrift feeling punctured 
by a holiness that exists inside everything. I am so sad and everything is beautiful. Come, let us hold the sacred tension of this day together. Come, let us worship. Hello, I'm Jennifer Hackett and I am proud to serve on the ministerial staff of this church. My pronouns are she and her. We are excited today to be introducing you to our lay pastoral associates. We sometimes refer to them as LPAs. This may be a new term for some of you, so we'll give it just a little background. The nationwide program creating LPAs was initially a response to the trauma surrounding 9-11, recognizing that there was a larger need for pastoral care than there were ministers. In January of 2016, the Reverend Kimberly Wooten, then this church's ministerial intern, brought the LPA training program to UUCE. The LPA team comprises one of our most visible shared ministries, congregants being present to and sharing care for others in our community. LPAs are for all ages. Anyone at any life stage may ask to speak to an LPA. We thank today our congregants, Sally Deku, Charlotte Ryder, and Janice Rutherford, who inspired us to begin the research and development of a lay pastoral associates team and who were first commissioned LPAs of UUCE. Reverend Sydney Morris continued to add LPAs to the team. And during her tenure here as a developmental minister, Rev Lowe recruited the current group of LPAs. Some of you may remember that after that in the pre-pandemic times, they used to convene in the minister's office after worship on Sundays. Last fall, Rev. Jen and I reconvened the team who have been and will continue to train monthly to meet the needs of this congregation. The LPAs are available to offer one-on-one -on -one support to those enduring grief, illness, disability, major life changes, unemployment, relocation, caregiving, isolation, or other life situations. On the new Pastoral Care Portal LPA page, you can also read about areas of specialty that each LPA holds. We are grateful for their dedication to this ministry, to the congregation. Rev. Jen will now invite the lay pastoral associates to come forward at this time to be commissioned and to share their covenant with you. Come on down, folks. Let's see your faces and let's hear your names. We've got Emmett Band, Daniel Blades, Molly Mae Culligan, Sally Deku, Carolyn Moss, Leslie Rex, and Susan Werner. I, I hope the Zoom people can see all of your faces. So this is Susan on the end over here. Susan. Sally, Leslie, Carolyn, Daniel, Molly Mae, Emmett. Each one of you has said yes to using your gifts to serve the members and friends of the Unitarian Universalist Church in Eugene. You said that you would be present with the people at some of the most difficult times in their lives, offering a non-judgmental space for deep listening. We, the members of this spiritual community, recognize you as our lay pastoral associates. We acknowledge your gifts and ask that you care for us when we reach out to you. And so now, LPAs, let us hear the words of the covenant you are making with this congregation. Repeat after me. We lay pastoral associates, we lay pastoral associates covenant, to be fully present covenant to be fully present when offering pastoral care, offering pastoral care to UUCE's congregants. 
We pledge confidentiality. We pledge confidentiality. As we expand pastoral presence. Throughout our, congregation. throughout our congregation. We strive to be a safe haven for our congregants in need. All that we do is in service to the mission of UUCE. And we can say together, empowered by love, we transform ourselves and serve our world. You may, you may take your seats. Today and every Sunday, one or more or all of the lay pastoral associates will come up to the front of the sanctuary right after worship if you would like to talk to them or make an appointment to meet with them at a later time. May we now enter a time of prayerful meditation. We're practicing loving kindness which is a practice from the Buddhist tradition called metta. If you'd like to, and if you feel comfortable, close your eyes. Be comfortable where you are. And see yourself as if looking into a mirror. Here, here is someone worthy of your love and care. Here is someone worthy of your forgiveness. Delight in the company of yourself and say to yourself, may I be happy, may I be well, may I be at peace. And now extend loving kindness to the people dearest to you, the ones who are easy for you to love. They may be sitting right next to you. They may be miles away. See their faces in your mind's eye and say to them, may you be happy. May you be well. May you be at peace. And now extend that loving kindness to a bigger circle. Think about someone you see regularly, like people here in this church, people at the grocery store or at work or at school, the person who delivers your packages. Today, we send prayers to Kat Johnson, who is usually sitting in the sound booth back there with Phil and Amy. Kat is at home after surgery and doing well so far. We think about all of the people in our circle of acquaintances and friends who need a little extra care today. And so may we say to them, may you be happy. May you be well. May you be at peace. And now let's expand our loving kindness and our awareness to strangers, those we may never meet, and yet they are kin, members of this human family. We send loving kindness to all who are suffering because of the war in Ukraine. We send our compassion and strength to all the women around the world who are losing their freedom to choose the kind of life they want to live. Let us say to them, may you be safe. May you be well. May you be at peace. 
And now let us expand our awareness to someone who brings up negative feelings, uncomfortable feelings within us. See that person in your mind's eye. Maybe they hurt us. Maybe they're not able to see the impact on others. Can we see them as someone, just another human being trying to do their best in this life? For our sake, if not for theirs, let us say to them, may you be happy. May you be well. May you be at peace. O eternal source of love, these are the honest prayers of our hearts. May all beings be well. May all manner of things be well. Amen. Blessed be. A few days ago, I sent my mom a gift. It was a delicate silver necklace for Mother's Day. It looks so pretty sitting there in that um, white square cushion of cotton, and I knew that she would really like it. But it also seems so inadequate. How could this one thing really tell her how much I love her? How could this one thing convey that I think she is the bravest woman that I know and how I can't bear to think of her not being here anymore? It reminded me of one of my favorite Billy Collins poems in which he finds this plastic lanyard he made at summer camp when he was a little boy. Some of you know it. The Lanyard by Billy Collins. The other day, I was ricocheting slowly off the blue walls of this room, moving as if underwater from typewriter to piano, from bookshelf to an envelope lying on the floor, when I found myself in the L section of the dictionary, where my eyes fell upon the word lanyard. No cookie nibbled by a French novelist could send one into the past more suddenly, a past where I sat at a workbench at a camp by a deep Adirondack lake, learning how to braid long strips of plastic into a lanyard, a gift for my mother. I had never seen anyone use a lanyard <laughs> or wear one, if that's what one did with one. But that did not keep me from crossing strand over strand again and again until I had made a boxy red and white lanyard for my mother. She gave me life and milk from her breasts. I gave her a lanyard. <laughs> She nursed me in many sick rooms, lifted spoons of medicine to my lips, laid cold cloths on my forehead, and then led me out into the airy light and taught me how to swim and walk. And I, in turn, presented her with a lanyard. <laughs> Here are a thousand meals, she said, and here is clothing and a good education. And here is your lanyard, I replied, <laughs> which I made from, with a little help from my counselor. Here is a breathing body and a beating heart, strong legs, bones and teeth, and two clear eyes to read the world, she whispered. And here, I said, is the lanyard I made at camp. And here, I wish to say to her now, 
is a smaller gift, not the worn truth that you can ever repay your mother, that you can never repay your mother, but the rueful admission that when she took the two-tone lanyard from my hand, I was as sure as a boy could be that this useless, worthless thing I wove out of boredom would be enough to make us even. <laughs> this morning, Molly Mae Culligan and Marge Cole and I are sharing stories from the multi-colored layers of Mother's Day. And later, we're gonna invite you to come forward, if you want to, to place one of these beautiful stones in water to add your stories to ours. In a poem entitled Invisible Work, by Alison Luderman. She describes a young woman saying, it's hard. You bring him to the park, run rings around yourself to keep him safe, cut hot dogs into bite-sized pieces for dinner, and there's no one to say what a good job you're doing, how you were patient and loving for the thousandth time, even though you had a headache. The work of her heart is the work of the world's heart. To everyone here who calls themselves mom or meme, mama, amma, I wish you a day full of joy. It may be a complicated joy for some of you, and we want to honor that truth. Now here's a story that you might be able to relate to. It's about a young mom named Bree who wanted to take the perfect holiday photo of her family five in her family. Now she had picked out all the matching outfits, found a world-class photographer, arranged all the furniture in the house, but when it was time to get everyone into place, the small humans were not having it. <laughs> they just did not cooperate with the grand plan. She couldn't get the youngest ones to put down the phone, and the middle child had messed up her hair, and the bow was out of place, and then the oldest child kept untucking his shirt. Dad, in the midst of all of this chaos, said, why can't we just take the picture as we are? I mean, this is our family. Which promptly started a fight. And the temperature in the room just kept going up and up and up. By the time Bree had wrangled everyone into place, she was sweating, <laughs> her face was flush. But you know, that final photo was picture perfect. Shirts were tucked in, hair was in place, and the youngest had his hands in the most angelic position. Mom's eyes were closed as she kissed Dad. No one could have known that the phone was photoshopped out of the boy's hands, and Bree's eyes were closed because she was so angry she didn't want to look at her husband. I hope that you all feel the freedom to be the wonderful, non-perfect moms that you are. You are more than enough. You know, ever since I left home at the age of 18, I've always lived far away from my mom. But whenever I go home, one of my favorite things to do is early in the morning, after my dad has gotten up to make the coffee, I crawl into bed with my mom and snuggle with her. And she is so warm and soft, and she smells like home. And I don't care that I'm too old to be doing this anymore. There's just a part of me that wants that kind of cozy comfort. And as we both grow older, that comfort increasingly is tinged with sadness anticipatory grief. 
among the flowers today, gorgeous, gorgeous flowers, and the brunches and the cards and the lanyards woven by small hands, there is also a tinge of grief. They say that during this pandemic, over 200,000 children have lost their parents or primary caregivers. And among us are, are those who have difficult or complicated relationships with our mothers. Many of you have lost your mothers during this last year. This is your first Mother's Day without them. And some of you have experienced the death of your child and you know the attendant truth that once a mother, always a mother. Dr. Carla Holliday is a professor at Duke University whose own child had died. She thought, well, there are orphans and there are widows and there are widowers, but what is the word for a parent who has lost a child? The Germans have a word. It's loosely translated as orphaned parent. And in English, we speak of bereaved parents, but Dr. Holliday didn't think that was quite right. It didn't get to the heart of it. And so this English professor kept digging and researching, and she finally found a Sanskrit word. And this made her so happy because previously she felt, um, quote, she felt punished by this empty space in the language. And so she was happy when she found this word, viloma, spelled V-I-L-O-M-A-H. And even though this Sanskrit word doesn't really connect to death or loss of a child, it does connote the inversion of what is right, that which is against the natural order of things, something that just wasn't supposed to happen. Marjorie. Good morning. My name is Marjorie Cole. <clears throat> I'm hoarse today. Um, my pronouns are she and her. I wrote a poem in 1981, shortly after we lost our son. It was part of my grieving process. And as Reverend Jen just told you and said, once a mother, always a mother. And I know this is true, because even when our children leave this earth before we do, we carry them in our hearts forever. It occurred to me while thinking about what I wanted to say to you today before I read what I wrote, that I won't be reading this on Father's Day or on Grandparents' Day. But I do believe in my heart that once a parent, always a parent. And once a grandparent, always a grandparent. So although I'm reading this today for the mothers and for the children who have gone on ahead of us, I'm offering it to all of you. Because although we grieve very differently, we love the same. 1981. He was 18, a warm, generous, loving, shining in the sun, boy man. He would fish before he would clean his room and teach the younger ones to play ball before dishes, chemistry, and other stuff. He put his arms around his grandmother shortly before the accident and told her that he would always love her. Being a boy man, he was sometimes foolish, learning too late that beer and pickups don't mix. 
Lately, my heart has known that this came from his father and me, and we shared our imperfect love with him. His laughing spirit came from that part of the world, giving birth to all that is good, our firstborn. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. When I was growing up, I never doubted that I would someday experience childbirth and motherhood. It was the natural order of things. So when I was 27 and married to my first husband, we were overjoyed to learn that we we lost that baby after just three months and unable to have another one. We just didn't know how to talk about that loss. And we didn't know how to talk about many important things after that. Many, many, many years later, I now am surprisingly a stepmom to two children, learning what it's like to mother children who are becoming adults. For all who anticipated a baby that never came, Molly May offers these words of loving kindness. In Leonard Cohen's song, Heart With No Companion, the chorus sings, for a mother in confusion, her cradle still unfilled. There is boundless love in my heart for those among us who longed for a baby that never came. For those among us who came to the edge of adulthood and found an ache inside for someone who did not come to be, someone who wasn't asked for or wasn't invited, and yet someone who is missed when it becomes too late in the day to welcome them. The years of trying to become a parent that so many go through is something my heart seeks to recognize and give space to. We honor the grief, the loss, and the longing. There is grief in unanswered dreams. There is grief within the twilight that wonders, what if I had? I honor that loneliness, and I share it from my perch as a bereaved mother. I know what I am missing as I have seen her face. Though I don't know anything about what would have become, and that is something I have spent hours into days and thought about. The moment we imagine parenthood, we leap into their lives, and we start our daydreams about who they will be, who they will become, what they will do. May this day honor every person who did not become a parent and yet longed to be one. May this day honor every person who later realized that maybe they would have wanted to be a parent had the years not blurred by so fast. You matter today and always, and from my heart to yours, I send you love and recognition. It was our own Kat Johnson who told me the other day that um, in the UK they celebrate Mothering Day rather than Mother's Day. It's a lovely word reminding us that anyone can offer the act of mothering. But as I did more research about it, I realized that the original meaning of Mothering Day wasn't about mothers at all. It was about the mother church. 
And while we don't necessarily ascribe to that belief here in the UU congregation, I do believe that a certain kind of nurturing does happen in spiritual communities. For all of us who are far away from our mothers in all the ways that can happen, we still crave and desire some kind of nurture and care no matter how old we are. And when you just need someone who will listen to you without giving you advice, and when you're exhausted because you've spent all week taking care of everybody else in your household and need someone to take care of you, when you need to hear yourself just speaking without interrupting until you find some sense of truth then this spiritual community is here in small groups and in the lay pastoral associates and in your ministers, we are here. And because we are also flawed human beings, we may not always be able to nurture you in the way that you really need and want to be nurtured hard as we try. And so you can always turn to the holy, present in all of life, remembering that we have a beautiful mother. Her hills are buffaloes, her buffaloes hills. We have a beautiful mother. Her oceans are wombs, her wombs oceans. We have a beautiful mother, her green lap immense, her brown embrace eternal, her blue body everything we need. May it be ever so. Amen and blessed be. And now, for those of you who are willing, um, I invite you to come up and place a stone in the water. Let that be whatever you need it to be today, calling out a name, a feeling, a prayer, a wish, anything that you want. I want you to know that these stones came from Rev Lowe's house. Each one of these stones was hand-picked by her, and so they're very special, um, I promised. I would return them to her, okay? <laughs> um, I'm also, um, I'm also gonna ask if Marge, if you would um, stand by that table, and Molly May, if you would stand by that table, and all of you, if you could please be mindful to make room for people who need a little extra space to move around. Um, Steve, I don't know if there's anything we can do with the camera to just ensure that nobody uh, trips over that. And um, I've got some water here saved from our water communion that we did in September, and I'll add that to the bowls as well. So as you feel moved, um, come on up. <laughs> Extinguish this flame, but not, not the light of truth. The warmth of community or the fire of commitment, these we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And now, friends, go into this day, your heart a little bit more open, your spirit a little more lifted to be a blessing to yourself and to everyone you meet. Go now. In peace and love, my friends.